Hello, good day, everyone. Coming in to do your weekly energy update. <laughs> it feels like we have just ran a marathon. Um, so on my weekend report, I spoke about, you know, something that was just coming through. It's like, you're going to see it on March 25th. And, and it was a, and it was met and it was a mass, massive message that I was receiving from Metatron. Um, and it literally was this asteroid that was passing through, passing by. And so to uh, most people, it may be like, oh, it just passed by. It didn't hit us. It's not the fact that it hits us. It's the shift in energy when that breaks through energy when that come when those asteroids come through when we have stuff like that that's happening and then with all that electric magnetic field that we've been seeing as northern lights what we've been seeing glowing and glistening everywhere and if you looked close enough if you're really looking if you go out and you take pictures you may be surprised at some of the strobes of like little strobes that you may be seeing up here there is a lot, when that asteroid came through, there was a lot of, oh, there was a space and an opening for a lot of new energy to come in. So there's this, there's these strobes of new energy and being able to connect to that energy, being able to speak to that energy, being able to gain wisdom from that energy, from what's going on, what we're seeing, what we're witnessing, what we're, what we're, what we're learning. And there's so much to be learned. There's so much to be gained. There's so many things that are happening. So this week on March the 20, so this is Tuesday. I could have, you know, I could have recorded it yesterday, but the message ran until yesterday. So I knew that energy wasn't shifting until today. So this is March the 28th and uh, we are coming into a whole new cycle. So we have the beginning of a, you know, cancer in the moon happening today. So we have a lot of emotional uh, a lots of emotional energy to work with today. Um, and so in the, in the moon cycle, so in that moon cycle, we do have a lot of that emotional energy to work with today, but we also have the, that evolution of emotions. And there's so many things that are just saying, you know, just stop digging so deep into what you can't solve. And so there's a lot of what is like if we spend if we spend a lifetime if you spend a lifetime telling yourself this statement i am fixing my past i'm healing my past you are not healing the past you're you're working with your mind's ability to be able to stay invested and connected into the past and making choices and decision based on past experiences past conditioning still programming and conditioning your now and your future. And so that energy, that language is where we're feeling a shift that's beginning. There is a change that is happening. There's things that's starting to move, that's starting to come through this experience that just says, um, you may be surprised of who may enter into your life now. You may be absolutely just caught off guard to people from the past who you may have never have even connected to in the past that may re-enter somehow into your life because there is, there's a shift in that barrier, that, that sense of connecting to souls that you may have had one opportunity to meet or you may have connected to, you may have not gotten along, you may have not liked them, you may have judged as the snobbery you may have been like they're you know those people are not very nice or they never treated me very nice or whatever it may be well you're not meeting them in the past you may be re they may be re-entering to meet you in in this moment in this present moment in where we are right now and so we do have you know and this so, so this gives us the the opportunity to shift to Losing some of the language that we have been using over the past few years of, of saying, stay present, stay present, I'm present, to be present in your now. Do you understand what it means sometimes to be present in your now, right? So what does that mean? What did that mean rather than just saying it, right? It's like, I'm just going to be right here right now. And so switching language and doing that switch in language is coming around to, I am I am in the presence. I am, I am, I am presence. I am 
I am that I am. I am presence. And so the I am presence that's entering in is the essence of divinity, divine. And as we've been meeting with this council and working with the divine council over this entering into the into heaven's into heaven's gate, into heaven's cross, whatever you know we use for that language. And as as God gives me this message in a way of saying, you know, speak it as speak it as you know it. Speak it from your heart. Speak it from the essence of how you've experienced this in the past four or five years, like how this has come for you, right? Because it has come for me. Divinity has awakened with it, something within me. And that divinity has awakened and that divine within me has awakened and became the mirror reflection to look into, which means sometimes it's harder to look at. Look at. It, is hard, it is easier to look at a monster than it is to look at the divine. It's easier to look at our, our, our not great things about ourselves than it is to look at what we have done right. It's easier to see what somebody else has done wrong to you instead of seeing their divine, instead of seeing the good in people, instead of seeing something about them that makes them appear different to us, right? That, that gives us the opportunity to see that we have all been these, we've all been exposed to the emotions of others. We have all been exposed to, you know, the, the shadowy, the, you know, the shadows, what hides in the shadows of people. We've all been exposed to the monsters of people. We have bared witness to, and we are bearing witness to even still right now on earth. And we said, when we crossed this heaven's gate, it was not going to become easier, that this was going to become one of the most challenging times. And we are going to see the ugliness come in my weekend message i wrote i spoke a lot about you're going to see that collapse of that masculine energy in such a way of bringing forth a healing in the masculine and that means the the healing in the masculine energy of our of our human existence and we all have a masculine energy so the masculine energy that dictates that that controls us sometimes that overrides our emotions that that gets us lost in in just feeling like we have to be at war with everything. We have to, we have to find this aggressive way to, to express ourselves, that, that, that arguments, that big fights, that everything is kind of collapsing. And it's collapsing in a way that just says, maybe we need to breathe into the space. Maybe we need to stop. And so you're going to see kind of the ugliness in a lot of ways, in a lot of people. And it's an ex because people are exposed right now where we have this because we're, the reflection is the divine. And so the, because the reflection is the divine and the, and the I am presence is what is so present right now is that it makes it, it, it makes it, it reactivates or triggers that, that rebellion. It triggers that rebellious behavior, the, the, the bad, the bad girl, the bad boy behavior, that sense of F you or that that tantrum or the frustration or the bitterness, that sense of what is not our truth is what you're experiencing and what we may be experiencing. We're going to see it. It's because there is such a collapse that is happening. And so we're bearing witness to this because it is so hard. And the divine and the, the divine presence that looking at us is just saying, I'm not going away. We're not, we're coming in, in, in forces. We're coming in to really, truly expose the imposter light. We're coming in to expose to you how much we've been imposters to our truth, how much damage we've done to our own physical bodies, to our minds, to our story, to our lives, how we've allowed ourselves, because it is easier to allow the AI world to run our lives rather than to be able to use our minds because we have so damaged that instinctual self. We have so we have so cluttered and given so much of our mind to not thinking. It is easier for something else to think for us. It is easier for someone else to tell me what to do than to do for myself. And so I just know when these books, when I was given these books to write from channel, they are such a, you know, they're not perfectly placed in writing to align to the rules of writing to writing a book. They're not anything like that. They're not, they're not how-to books because 
we should be at the stage of where we start to question how come we get so upset and so angry with ourselves sometimes when we are not being, when we are being an imposter to ourselves, when we, because we can't match and meet and achieve that how-to list to be that. So we get lost how to be the perfect partner, how to be, how to be the perfect version of yourself, how to live your most perfect life, how to manifest your most perfect things. It's an impossible task in so many ways. So even if somebody is even sharing a video with you, you are getting a portion of the part that they are sharing with you about how great your life is. So if someone says, I, I made a six-figure salary, what is the six-figure salary? What is it? And do you actually hold it? I know what it's like to make a six-figure salary. And I also know what it's like to lose everything. And I also know what it's like to make six figures on paper and to see how much you don't get to keep, how much is not yours, how much you don't have in the end. I get to, I know this experience. And so they're just, they're just saying in this reflection and in the I am presence to, to stop the comparison to stop looking, but to to observe now, to stay in the light and look long enough that you can tell, as always appears to me, one tear will trickle down my face. And it's always the essence of I am worthy. And so knowing that we're in something that is not worthy of our love and our light and our attention is the shift that happens when we allow ourselves to just just keep sliding over, to just keep going forward, to just flowing. If we're sitting next to that constant negative energy of somebody being cruel and unkind, keep moving, keep moving, just keep moving, keep moving forward, keep going, not wondering what you did to become that person. How, you, how can I fix that? You can't fix that. They need to spend for long enough in that divine presence. And so this divine presence is just bringing forth for us. And so it's not about I am present. I'm going to be right here. I'm going to exist right here in this moment. You're always, as long as you have a breath, you're in the moment. You, you're in the moment. Your thoughts may be elsewhere. You may be everywhere. But what are you, what's in those moments? What's filling up those moments? And so the I am presence is putting that 360 mirror all the way around us and just keeping us in truth. And so in truth, in light, in love, restores integrity, resolving, releasing, kind of pushing out of us. So we're seeing, feeling, sensing as I'm seeing it right now, it's being pushed out of us. So we have this, you know, it is ejecting and you know, ejecting out of us all of that which has contaminated our thoughts, our beliefs of things about us, about ourselves, becoming the essence of our beautiful selves in a more beautiful way, seeing the feminine energy within us leading the way also allows the divine mother, father, even within the masculine to awaken to say, you were an innocent child. You were an innocent child. So a lot of the instabilities that you may be bearing witness to is as if angel wings are wrapping around, especially the masculine energy, and just saying, it's safe. You are safe. You are safe to now let go. You don't have to go to war. You are, don't have to be a, a soldier every single day of your life. You don't have to be you don't have to be the sole provider to your family. You don't have to do those things. Those are those things we are breaking free of because we have placed such high expectations up on that energy, whether it is our own, whether you're female with, you know, and you're existing in all of your masculine energy or you are masculine and you just feel so responsible. It is that level of feeling as if we have to carry the weight of the world, feeling as if we have to perfect things, feeling as if we have to get to that to-do list, feeling as if we have to do these steps to be somebody, breaking and breaking down these titles that have placed labels that have 
you know, fill your wall with certificates and you'll be enough. You will still never be enough. You'll still never be loved and liked by the people who will always be judgmental because they can't stand to see themselves. They have to look into other people to judge. And that is still going to be present. You're just going to see it way more because they're being forced to see themselves. They're being forced to look at themselves. So they can mimic, they can mock, they can laugh, they can do whatever. But this is the sense of being able to remove the sense of doubt. This presence is saying this is this is a this is a real reality. This is a real truth. And so these things that we see that we can't deny, that we can't turn the blind eye to, that we see. But then there's the things, then there's the things that have master manipulator, trickster, imposter that try to tell us we are the problem. We cause the problems. We create the problems. We're the problems. But the problems are much deeper. The problems run bigger. There is a there is a whole sinister energy that exists and it exists within us all. We all have it. But when it's activated and triggered to serve a purpose, to master manipulate, to, to, to entrap, to, to hold people hostage with fear and insecurities, that exposure, this is what's, and it's hard to see because we're so busy trying to see that we're the, trying to fix that we're the problem, but it's not the everyday people. The everyday people is not always that essence of the problem. So there's something over here and the divine is just saying, we are going to shine a light up on this. You're going to see this falling hard. You're going to see some big, big truth coming out. You're going to see things that you that you have been convinced over the past 20 years that this is the only way, this is, the, this is it. And you're going to see the veils of illusion drop around those things. And you're going to see a new truth. Just as just as the revelation, as we as we've seen the reveal of, you know, our our Adam and Eve story change, as we've seen the the objective around making Lilith into this absolute horrible demonized goddess, as we are told that we have to create a such a comparison of good, bad, ugly, right? And so we are bearing witness, but we all have. And we've all been to places that may not be the same severity, may not have the same energy, but we have all been in that energy. We've all had something of that, that just, that, that we can, that we can tap into and say, I have been, I have been that angry. I have been, I have kind of rejected people in my life and I've been not, you know, because I didn't like what they said or I didn't like what they did, or I, and I wasn't willing to listen any deeper because it was rubbing me the wrong way. Why is it rubbing me the wrong way? It rubs us the wrong way. So it becomes the irritant sometimes so that we can stop and really listen. So we stop running away from ourselves. So we stop running into these imposter energies and we stop just trying to create the image of who we think we need to be to just piss somebody else off. And so I myself in such a minute way experienced this yesterday when I myself am in a situation where I'm facing some of this energy and I ended up in the, in the grocery store and right at the door, here's all of these potato chips. Now my book coming, my next book coming out is called Wine and Chips. Here's all of these potato chips. This is how sinister energy works. This is how temptations meet us, right? And knowing where I was, knowing that I'm, I'm, I'm in the I am presence, I'm looking into the reflection of the divine and, and in this divine energy that I'm, that I'm having to sit across from and have a conversation with and look at, and I'm like, I'm going to get these chips and I'm going to sit tonight and I'm just going to give myself this leeway. And then when I walked around the store, I walked around all of the vegetables, when I walked around all the other things. When I got what I originally went for, what I originally went there for was to find something for my dinner. <laughs> and so when I got what I needed, which was all the things that I needed that were in alignment to me, this is what I recognized. This was that I'm, this was the masculine energy that's collapsing within me. Nobody's going to tell me what to do. I'm in control. I'm the boss. I can do what I want to do. And so as I got down to the chip aisle and all of these chips were looking at me, 
Then I was looking at all of this imposter energy. Then I was looking at all these tricksters. Then I was looking at all that it took to create those chips. All of how that simple little potato, and this is in my, this is in my new book, how this simple little potato just simply was just not enough. It had to be created into something more. And so this is one of the whole big chapters in my book. And so this simplicity of this potato and what it represents and this, and this moment, and as I got there with the chips and I seen the exact same chips that were at the door, now in the aisle, in the beginning of the aisle, but down lower, not at your face, but down lower on the shelves. I looked down and I seen the price and I seen that, oh, you, you get, you even get points. You even get points on your scene card. If you get these chips, like, wow, you get all these extra points. See it? Can you see it? Can you see this master manipulation? It plays on the old emotions. It plays on what we are here to now heal. So this emotions was right. This emotions were right there with me. And I took the chips and I, and I heard the voice just say this divinity, this presence that walks with me. I heard this divine guide that, that guides me with wisdom because it's not that I'm wiser that guides me with wisdom that just said, you eating those chips is not, you eating those chips will not change, will not change what needs to change. You eating those chips will not punish anyone else. It will punish you. And you don't want to punish you or anyone else. So why would you want to get those chips? And why would you want to feed the master manipulators, the imposters? Why would you want to buy into this again? You know, I put the chips back on the shelf because the I am presence was with me in the moment. Hear the difference in the conversation. I am present. The I am presence was with me in the moment. The I am presence is with you in every single moment. And when you stop doubting, you're not crazy, right? When you stop doubting and you just listen, there is such truth. And as we experience these, these collapsing, these things that are, that are just so visible, they're so in our face right now, that it's so visible because now we're starting to see. Now we're starting to really, honestly, now you're seeing beyond. Now you're starting to see things bigger. You're starting to see the bigger picture. You're starting to see it in a bigger way. It has been to push out the little that exists within you. The divine is not massive in you. The divine is the little. It's like the little man in the little business that has to work a hundred times harder and has to, and is the one who has to take the brunt of everything that is wrong yet the big giants don't. There's a difference. And there's a big difference. And that little within us, that little innocence within us, this little divine light is massive. And when we learn that that little inner child story was this little piece of our lives, because we were only little for a little period of time, that we have this whole mass of truth to really, truly look at that we have, that we sit. And I said this in my teachings last night in the seven, when I was teaching Deepak's seven spiritual laws in one of my master classes, we get so intrigued to buy those little tiny monsters that you, that you put in the water and watch them grow big. Well, that's how the monster grows. We put it in, we feed it the emotions and we're fascinated by what grows. We're fascinated. We even buy the music of it by watching people become a imitation to their truth. And it's way more exciting than to watch somebody in their raw, real truth. That's what we've been taught. And it's fascinating. And so there's something so simple inside of us. And so this is the message that we have for you this week. Be aware of, the st of every time you use this day, I'm being present. I'm going to be in my moment. I'm going to be in my time. Bless you for being there. We want you to stay there. But recognize the I am presence is with me in my moment. That's your message. In all choices and decisions, in all that you have to make, 
in all those things, the I am presence is with me. And when you step there, the I am presence is with me in the moment. The I am presence will guide you through the wisdom that is needed to make it through the experiences. Much love. Please subscribe. If you like these videos, please subscribe. I'm literally almost closer to having, I've got almost 900 videos on this YouTube channel. And I am so much closer to actually getting to even 900 subscribers. I have been in that shadow. I've been running around. My light has been down here in these shadows and Facebook and YouTube for so many years. And, um, and that's an honesty. That's, but I don't stop being who I am. I stop, don't stop doing what I'm doing. I am not defined by the, by the followers or the subscribers or by anything like that. Who I am beyond the stories of what we see happening is so much more because the I am presence exists within me. And when you awaken that divinity and divine within you, you just keep doing. I just keep answering the call. And so as God said to me, I didn't ask you to sell the books. I didn't ask you to to do the, to market. I asked you to write, I asked you to create, and that's all that I'm asked to do. So the rest is out there and whatever shall be, shall be in our lives. And there is just, and so there's just so much that is happening. There's so much new energy that came through with this asteroid that went through that most people didn't even know even happened. Uh, but Metatron is just filling me full of so much love and light and, and just, I can't wait to share it all. I can't wait to share more with you. Much love. Have a beautiful day and go to coreythorne.com and you can check out my books and purchase my books and all of my upcoming work and the school, everything. Bye-bye.